you're familiar with IQ. You probably also heard of emotional intelligence, EQ. Over the 10 years of my work as intimacy coach, I also identified SQ, sexual intelligence. So just like emotional intelligence helps you be in control of your emotions and your reactions, it helps you communicate with people and ultimately translates into better relationships, all kinds of relationships. Sexual intelligence is what allows you to have the best intimate relationships and the best sex life. And there is a direct correlation. The higher your sexual intelligence, the better your intimate relationships, the better love life, the better sex life. So of course, how can you build up your sexual intelligence? What can you do to boost it up so that you can enjoy the best intimate life? Well, there are many ways, but in this video, I'm going to share with you five pillars, five elements that people with high sexual intelligence have so that you can focus on developing them. Hey, my love, my name is Magda Kay. I am an intimacy expert, Tantra teacher, and the founder of the School of Intimacy. And welcome. This is the best place for you to get all the tips, insights, and techniques to enjoy the most fulfilling and exciting intimate life. So let me share with you five ways how you can boost your sexual intelligence so you can enjoy the best love and sex life. The first pillar is playfulness. So this is about being curious, being open-minded, and being open and able to experiment, bring in novelty, try new things. Now, in order to do that, you cannot be taking yourself too seriously, but you also don't want to be taking sex too seriously. And to be honest, as a society, we generally really do. We're so serious about things, like the whole seduction is such a serious matter. So you have to be able to be silly, do something stupid, fail at things, look not sexy. That is the element of playfulness. Sexuality hates routine and boredom kills desire. So in order to keep things moving, you gotta cultivate the quality of playfulness. Now, this is strongly connected to point number two, and this is the ability to create safety. And this actually has sort of like two subcategories. So it's about creating safety for your partner and for yourself. So literally safety is what determines how much we can explore, how much we can step outside of our comfort zone and what's familiar and try new things. If you don't feel safe, you will literally hold very tight to what you have and will try to keep things the way they are. So safety is essential. Now, when it comes to building safety for your partner, this is about the ability to tune into them and understand what they need, understand where their boundaries are. So they don't always have to tell you, but you can read it. You know, you need to be able to recognize like, wait, something is off with my partner. I know that right now they feel agitated and triggered and I need to change whatever I'm doing so they can come back into the calm state. And you also want to be able to cultivate safety for yourself. And this is about the relationship that you have with yourself. Do you stand up for yourself? Do you speak up for yourself? Do you honor your boundaries? Do you communicate them and uphold them? Do you know what you need and do you take care of those needs? This is how you build safety for yourself. So again, people with high sexual intelligence, they're really good at creating safety for themselves and their partner. The third element is the ability to create desire. So love and desire are two different things. In fact, they're not related. You can have a lot of love and zero desire. You can also have a lot of desire and no love. So things that help us build love, they're not the same than the things that help us build desire. So if you want more love, you know, love loves familiarity, proximity, and closeness, but desire likes the opposite. Desire likes distance. 
So when we speak about the ability to create a desire, this is really the ability to play with distance because there is just the right amount of distance that works the best. If you don't have enough distance, then again, you're in proximity and you're building love, not desire. But if you have too much distance, you can actually break the connection and there is no relationship. So you need to know where is that sweet spot, just enough to really feel the tension and bring the polarity up. This is also your ability to flirt and seduce your partner. Like it's not something we only do at the beginning when we meet someone. You want to be able to maintain it throughout your relationship. And another thing you want to be able to build is anticipation. Anticipation is actually distance in time. So again, this is such an important element of high sexual intelligence, knowing how to create desire. Number four, and it's receptivity. So this one is really interesting because most of us are not actually able to fully receive information from our own body or from our partner. Most of us are like fast trains. So think about any time that you were on a train that was going fast and try looking through the windows. All you see is just like blurry images. You cannot really make out exactly what is there. And so that's kind of how we move through life. That's how we move through our intimate relationships and even sex. We're in the giving mode, nonstop moving forward really fast. And we don't have the ability to actually tune into what is happening around us. So receptivity is about the ability to, first of all, tune into yourself. What is it that you're feeling? What are the sensations in your body? Can you identify where they are? Can you identify how intense they are? Can you listen to yourself and understand if you still feel safe or not? What do you need to feel safe? Are you comfortable or not? What do you need in this moment? What do you want? Then it's also receptivity towards your partner. Exactly the same thing. It's about being able to receive their feedback. So when you're making love, can you just feel whether your partner is feeling a lot of pleasure or not and how much pleasure and where in their body? Can you say if they're really having an orgasm or just faking it? Now, receptivity is also being open to feedback. When your partner tells you they like or don't like something, can you receive that? So this is a huge, huge element of high sexual intelligence. And the last thing that everyone with high sexual intelligence has is the ability to let go. So we're talking about letting go of control, which is not really easy because most of us don't feel comfortable, don't feel safe, and we're trying to hold on to things, not allow anything to change. Like we want to know what's going to happen. And this is something that really impacts our sex life because an orgasm ultimately is well, loss of control. In fact, absolute loss of control. So people with really high sexual intelligence, they have the ease to just let it go. Let the sexual energy do whatever it wants to do. Because sexual energy, your arousal, your orgasm, the arrows, they are wild and they hate being controlled. They hate doing what you tell them to. So just check with yourself, you know, when during sex you feel like you want to laugh or cry or scream or shake, do you let yourself or do you stop this expression because you're thinking that it looks weird, it sounds weird, that doesn't really look sexy, you know, it would be too weird, your partner could freak out. So again, high sexual intelligence also incorporates the ability to just let go. So if you want to build your sexual intelligence, if you want to become more competent and confident in your intimate life, then the School of Intimacy is the best place to do it. There's so much content, so many techniques, and so much amazing information available for you to really learn the skills, to practice various techniques, so you feel very confident, courageous, and certain about you, your skills as a lover, as a partner. Everyone who goes through the School of Intimacy really shoots up their sexual intelligence and it shows in their intimate life. 
So if you would like to learn more about the school and join, go to www.magdakay.com slash school. You will also find the link in the description of this video. Have a look, see what is there. And if you feel ready, you can join me, join the community. I will be honored to have you with us. And love, if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you would like more videos like that. And for more connection and personal updates, also make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post every day and this is the best place to connect with me in a more informal and personal way. My love, thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you next week with the next video. Bye!